Good morning, everyone. Very warm welcome in a, a bit chilly and damp day. And welcome to those who um, join us via online. Um, my name is Reverend Muhammad, and it's my second time coming to St. Peter service here. It's the first time I come join you on Sunday. First time I went to uh, Thursday service. So I'm, I'm glad to be here. I started my post eight months ago, near eight months ago, and now is the first opportunity to be among you on Sunday. So very warm welcome, both real and online. We're using a um, um, booklet, uh, those who are online, probably you have in the electronic version, and we are starting in page three. And later on, I turn on the um, candles, or light the candles, and I've been told that there is a poem here, which uh, you, you haven't seen it for a long time. I'm going to read it. I thought it's beautiful and to say the purpose of the candles. But before we start our service, let us have a moment of the quiet and give our hearts and minds and souls and bodies to our Lord. Let us, Lord, prepare us. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Jesus is coming. The church is glad to sing. And let the Advent candles brightly then in a ring. The first is for God's promise to put wrong, to, to put wrong things right. Can't see it here. And bring to earth darkness the hope of love and light. The first candle is a symbol of hope for us. Jesus is coming, and we are waiting for him. The second for the prophets who said that Christ would come with good news for many, an angry word for some. The third is for the Baptist who cried, Prepare the way, be ready for Jesus, both this and every day. Prayer of penitence. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purpose of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Heavenly Father, you have created a universe of light Forgive us when we return to darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. Cleanse and heal our blinded, blinded sight. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you give us light in our hearts. Renew us in faith and love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to a new life. Amen. Shall we say the glory, Gloria together, the second one, the longer one? Glory to God in the highest, and peace in his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated on the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayers. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of our pray for today, the collect. God, for whom we watch and wait, you send John the Baptist to prepare the way for your son. He was courage to speak the truth, to hunger for justice, and to suffer for the cause of right. With Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Going to have our first reading. The first reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 61. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins they shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia. alleluia. 
Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. <clears throat> there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now, they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor Elijah? nor the prophet, John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one who you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan where John was baptizing. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Great to be here again, and thank you so much for inviting me. As I mentioned, my name is Mohammed, and I'm originally from Iran. Um, I was born in a very strict Muslim family. We were very fundamentalist, but we were very strict Muslim. My father was part of a mosque elder, and my mom is still very strict Muslim. So I grew up in that environment. Um, and I did my Islamic duty when I was very young, um, fasting, namaz, or, uh, or pray. Um, and I read Quran four times during my, my Muslim life, I presume. But what is um, something inside me and I always wanted to become? I wanted to become like God, which is something very strange for a Muslim. God in Islam is unknown. So you can't become something which, has, which is unknown. But it was something inside me. And anyway, I grew up, uh, I lost my father when I was very young. Um, so, and the life became a bit tougher for us. I grew up in, uh, in Iran. I um, finished my studies. I went to the university. And something happened in my life. And I had to leave the country, become an asylum seeker. During my journey in Europe, um, I ended up in an Iranian pastor in France. And the moment I sat down, I was there for six days. He gave me the message of Christ and showed me the love I never had. The love like his children. I was there, very stranger, but he loved me 
like his children. Obviously, I did reject it. I thought this is the satanic um, messages. They want to take away from me from my God. And I, was, I was praying in his bedroom, and I prayed to Allah, protect me from these satans. But then he gave me the Bible. I read the Quran before. I said, go and compare. And he asked me a crucial question. Do you have a peace in you or in Islam? Basically, do you have a peace? And I said, yes, of course I have. But inside me, I didn't, because I knew I was a sinner. I knew there is a wall of sin between me and God. Whatever I do good, the twice of it, three times of it, the ten times of it, I do bad. Anyway, I left his home and carried on my journey. And I ended up in a situation which the life was so tough. One of my friends said, why don't you leave these gods and religion, sort out your life, and then come back and worship one. I said, fair enough. So I become God worshiper, whoever he or she is. Then I end up again in a difficult situation, which it was dead end, and nobody could help me except God. And I thought, I'm not a Christian, I'm not a Muslim, I'm not a Jew, so whose God is going to help me? I give one month to Islam. If he helps, it's truly really God. I give one month to Christianity. But that, that's the one... I knew at the time, then that's the true God. I gave one month to Islam, nothing happened. I did all my duties, nothing happened. The life was the same. I prayed to Christ and said, look, if you are alive and you are truly God, help me. Because that's the sticking bit. That's the difficult bit for a Muslim to understand or to observe or to accept a human as God. Accepting God the Father is easy. Accepting God the Holy Spirit is easy. Accepting God the Son is difficult. And he did. Within two weeks, I ended up miraculously here in the UK. And many people said, uh, it was, you're not going to end up in the UK. You're going to come back. But he did help me. But I thought, that's a chance. Many people come, so I'm one of it. It's not God. So I carry on my life. Um, end up in Birmingham. And uh, one day, uh, the parish minister, uh, my flat was near um, the church. And the parish minister come door to door, invited people to come to the church. And uh, he came to my door, knocked the door. My English wasn't uh, good enough in that time. But then I said, my name is Muhammad. And I know about Christianity. And then he found out I have a Persian Bible. Then he invited me, I invited him to come in and we, we, had, we become a friend. Um, and then he introduced me to another Iranian Christian, which uh, his name was Muhammad as well. And then we could speak in our mother language um, and discuss many things about Islam, Christianity, the basic of uh, Islam and Christianity and so on. So eventually I repent. I gave my heart to the Lord. But I kept some of it for myself. You know, when you come to the church, you are Christian. You come to the Christian environment, you are Christian. But when you go out, you are yourself. But uh, God wants all. They want all of our life. Um, and at the same time, Home Office refused my case. Um, and then I thought I'm going to be deported, and I tried to escape to go to Canada. But they caught me and put me in detention center. In detention center, it was the time, again, it was me and my God. Because they're going to deport me in two days' time. And I said, Lord, this is yours. Whatever I have is yours. Um, and there, there, there was a lot of things happening in detention center. One of the miraculous things was uh, one of the gods was born again. And he understood, he understood about my story and he started teaching me about Christianity. And then he became a, a chaplain of the same detention center. And I promised, Lord, if you release me, I will save you. Then he did his promise, and then I went to study Bible in Iranian Bible College. And they used to have Iranian Bible College, residential Iranian Bible College. Now they don't have it. And my wife came from Iran to study Bible, so we met each other. 
be married, be, 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 be back to Brighton. Um, and we started the Iranian church. And then after that, we left Brighton to Aldershot. Um, and I was looking for the next step. What is my calling? And uh, one of my friends suggested, why don't you join Church of England? I, th I thought, well, that's a crazy idea, um, but let's give it a go. Why not? So I joined my local church, and uh, at the same time, my local parish church was, was wanted to go to Iran as a sabbatical. So we bonded together, and um, he's still my spiritual father, a spiritual uh, director. Um, and then uh, he introduced me to the uh, ordination process. The more I went to the process, the more I found out this is my calling. And after that, I went to Oxford, studied three years. Um, then after that, Liverpool Cathedral, doing my curacy. After that, one year in Ankara, doing chaplaincy. And now I'm an uh, intercultural pioneer minister in St. Paul's, Oldby. Um, when Isaiah was talking about um, the spirit of sovereign God is on me because of the Lord has anointed me. He was talking, obviously, about Jesus Christ. And Jesus confirmed it in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4. However, our Lord Jesus Christ use us, use people like us, people like Reverend John, who knock my door and say, come to church. People like my, uh, Pastor Hosro, who become my spiritual father. People like George, who helped me, Reverend George, who helped me to go to the process. People like us. He used us to proclaim the good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to release prisoners from darkness, to comfort all who want, to provide for those who grieve. So I would like to encourage you to look at around you, your neighbor, your friends, your family, the next door stranger neighbor, go and knock the door. See what they need. Let us God use us for his purpose. And also we can become a woman or a man as a witness to testify concerning the light so that through all, through us, they know the light, like John the Baptist. We are not the light. We definitely not the light. But we can become a witness to the light, Jesus Christ. John knew exactly who he was. Was he a Messiah, a savior of the world? No. Was he a the prophet? No. Was he a supernatural figure with a supernatural power, Elijah? No, he wasn't. He knew he, who he was. He was a voice. I am the voice for one calling in the wilderness. Make a straight. Make a straight the way for the Lord. Can we become a voice? Can we become a voice, especially for those who come from different backgrounds, who have different understanding of our Lord Jesus Christ? Can we become a voice to make it straight the way of the Lord? Amen. We're going to have our first hymn.
say the creed together. Yeah, you see page, page seven. Let us affirm our, command, our common faith in Jesus Christ. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again? I believe and trust in God the Son. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? I believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The response to your kingdom come is your will be done. Your kingdom come, your, your will, will be done. Be done. Holy God, ever with us and ever on your way towards us, we look to you this Advent season. We will your kingdom to come, but we know it's not ours to take. So come to us in the many guises of love. Meet our longing, enter our waiting, Give life to our hope. Your kingdom come, your, your will, will be done. done. Advent God, hope of the hopeless, you alone give us reason to go on. Give hope to those who this day, all over our world, are hungry for the basic things. Food to stop children aching with hunger. A home to put a picture on a wall. Education to open the door to a job. Justice that gives everyone a chance. And at this time, we particularly pray for all those who are suffering from the pandemic, who long for the vaccination to lead to more normal life. And we must not forget those parts of the world driven out of the news, but where there is still conflict, fighting, suffering, sickness, and hunger. God of hope, give hope to the hopeless. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Advent God, lover of the loveless, you are the one who never fails to give love. May we do the same. We're aware of people or groups of people whom we reject because of what they've done to us or what we fear they might do to us. So let us think of them now and give us strength to love, to respond to them with kindness and give us the gentleness to love ourselves. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Advent God, God of those who think themselves godless, 
You are the rock on which our lives are built. Have mercy on those who try to live without you and lead them gently to the truth that sets us all free. Come afresh to the minds of those who think that they have thought your way out of reach. Come afresh to the hearts of us all, whether they be full of distractions or empty, because we long for you to be central to our lives, to those we know, and to the life of our world. Your kingdom come, your will be done. In a moment of silence, let us pray for those particularly on our minds at this time. Those in our own family, especially if we are separated from them. Those who need our prayers to recover from illness. And we hold them up before our God of love. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Holy God, this Advent, we set ourselves to longing again. Longing as did John the Baptist to see the Christ. We long for your kingdom to come and for this world to be transformed so that it can be on earth as it is in heaven. So come our Advent God with the promise of a new birth in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Sign up, please. <laughs>
You are in page eight, if you'd like to follow the liturgy. As this bread was scattered and then gathered and made one, so may your church be gathered into your kingdom. Glory to you, O God. Wisdom has built her house. She has mixed her wine. She has set her table. Glory to you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to our Lord, our God. We time to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give thanks and praise, Almighty God and Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For when he humbled himself to come among us in human flesh, he fulfilled the plan you formed to open for us the way of salvation, confident that your promise will be fulfilled we now watch for the day when, when Jesus Christ, our Lord, will come again in glory. And so with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven to proclaim your glory forever praising and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, as we obey his command. Send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine out for may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son, on the night before he died, he had supper with his friends and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is, the, this is my body, my blood of the new covenant. This is shed for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Savior of the Lord of all life, help us to walk together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favor on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with St. Peter, St. Paul, and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, 
now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one bread because we are shared in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called in his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. As you know, I'm come and save you. Um, please sit wherever you are. Is there anybody who wants gluten-free? No, great. So... Please hold the bread and we consume it together. Do remember our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us. Pray after communion. We say together, O Lord our God, make us watchful and keep us faithful as we wait the coming of your Son, our Lord, that when he shall appear, he may not find us sleeping in sin, but active in his service and joyful in his praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Notices, please.
First up, I have to uh, read an announcement from the Bishop of Leicester. He's pleased to announce the appointment of Reverend Sammy Lindsay, priest in charge of the Emmaus Parish team, also to be interim team vicar in the OB Great Glen team ministry and based here at St. Peter's. Sammy will be licensed by the Bishop of Leicester, Reverend Martin, right Reverend Martin Snow, on Sunday the 24th of January, 2021, in here, because I'm afraid the church isn't finished yet. Uh, the Bishop also announces that Reverend John Turn will be um, extending his curacy from the Emmaus Parish term to the Odeby Great Glen Ministry team, with effect from the same Sunday, 24th of January. So that's something we've been waiting for for a long time. And hopefully it will all go ahead on the 24th of January. We'll have to uh, start taking bookings. Um, you'll be aware that Rachel in the parish office has finished her <coughs> work, work, with us at the mo work with us at the moment. Uh, so the office is not being staffed on a regular basis. Uh, please ring either Martin or myself if there's anything reasonably urgent or Steve or any of the other ministry team if there's anything uh, <coughs> which requires clergy rather than us. Um, next Sunday morning, I don't think we're having a service. I'm not 100% certain, but I think that's the plan because we have in the evening nine lessons and quite a lot of carols. I have no idea who's organizing the service or what's going on, but it will be in the notices that will come out hopefully on Friday this week, if I get my act together and get them all edited and printed in time. <laughs> so I am the office for the time of the immediate future. In January, um, Anna, who is the wife of Phil, our premises officer, is going to do some hours in the office to keep the place ticking over for us. And Sylvia Lewis has been in hospital, is now out of hospital, and I've forgotten the name of the place, Harley Grange in Elms Road. Um, Diane has details of the address if anybody's looking to send her a card. Um, we have um, every hope that she will thrive there. I don't think there's any plan for her immediately to go back home again. I think she will be there for some time. Uh, I don't think there's anything else that's important? Oh yes, sorry, <laughs> well done. On your way out over here, there are little kits for you to make your Christingles because this afternoon, John Turn will be hosting a service on Zoom, which will be a Christingle service. And so there is in each of those bags over there, enough kit, I think other than the orange, for you to actually make your own Christingle. <laughs> You may have to sort of improvise and use an apple or something else if you haven't got an orange hand. <laughs> Thank you, Diane. <laughs> Thank you. Christ, the son of righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from before your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the bliss of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remains with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. It was great to be with you again. Thank you so much. And thank you for those who join us online. And enjoy the rest of the day and the week. <laughs>